Much. Drinkers of black coffee and lovers of dark chocolate, they are apparently not big fans just because of the taste. A Northwestern study has found that a lot of it has to do with genetics. Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine researcher Marilyn Cornelis joins us by phone today to talk about this study. Marilyn, can you hear us okay? I can hear you fine. Good afternoon to you and thank you for being here. You're welcome. All right, so tell us about this study. What is indeed the connection between coffee, uh, black coffee specifically, dark chocolate lovers, and genetics? Okay, well, just to um, provide a little bit of background, we previously identified a number of genetic variants that are related to the amount of coffee we consume. And most of these variants or these genetic factors are related to caffeine metabolism. So basically, individuals who can metabolize caffeine quickly tend to consume more coffee. Mm -hmm. Now, in this new study, we were interested to see whether those same genetic factors, as well as factors that are related to taste, whether they associate with a particular type of coffee consumption, so whether individuals like black coffee or whether they prefer it sweetened. And unexpectedly, we found that the same genetic variants that are related to caffeine metabolism, um, these variants also related to a preference for black coffee. So basically, individuals who are genetically predisposed to consuming a lot of coffee because of their increased caffeine metabolism, they also prefer their coffee black. And we interestingly found the same pattern with um, unsweetened tea as well as dark chocolate. So basically, these individuals prefer dark chocolate over milk chocolate. And what we're finding is that it's possible that these individuals learn to equate that bitter taste with the psychostimulant effects of caffeine. Hmm. And we know that tea and dark chocolate also contain caffeine, obviously at a much lower amount compared to coffee, but maybe these individuals are just more sensitive to just caffeine. And caffeine, is, caffeine itself is a compound that's also very bitter. So they might learn, they, we call this kind of a taste conditioning or a, a learned effect, that maybe this is kind of making it difficult for individuals to distinguish between a bitter taste and the psychostimulant effects of caffeine. Because um, humans generally um, learn to avoid bitter taste. But in this case, the psychostimulant effects of caffeine probably outweigh that bitter taste, and they learn to enjoy it. So does this explain all those people? Because we all know some of them. Anthony, I think you're one, one that can have just so many cups of coffee, and they don't, you know, go crazy with the jitters and things like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that's the amount of coffee. But the same individuals, it'd be interesting to when, when you look, when you find these people, ask whether they prefer black. All right, Anthony. Okay, so I have to ask, um, what would be the benefit of kind of zeroing in on some of these data points, Marilyn? Well, um, us researchers like to use these genetic factors to really understand the role that coffee and caffeine have in health. And uh, we know that there's some what we call confounding in these epidemiological studies. For example, heavy coffee drinkers also tend to be heavy smokers. And so it becomes very difficult to distinguish between those risks or those particular lifestyle factors and health. And generally, we assume that with these genetic factors, they're, un, they're not confounded. So um, these genetic factors will, will exclusively be related to the amount of coffee. Unfortunately, we're finding that they also associate with not only with the amount of coffee, but how people consume coffee. And we know that there's there's differences between the health effects of black coffee versus coffee with a lot of sugar. And we, can, we know that sugar is related to, um, sure. you know, right. uh, alters your weight, um, has, a, right. you know, has a role right. in weight management, which can have, a, have an impact. So mm -hmm. it's always better to consume your coffee without the sugar and milk. Okay. Um, so Anthony yeah, is doing it right with the black coffee. <laughs> Marilyn. I'll take that as good feedback. Marilyn Cornelis with the Feinberg School of Medicine. We appreciate your time. Very interesting findings. No doubt.